and we're live guys welcome to it's another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on tech we are of course broadcasting live straight out of stockholm sweden and we do the show each and every day at 8 a.m central european summertime guys i come to you like an atomic clock each and every day at that time but today we're actually doing at 9 a.m but this is a small deviation but guys we have so much to discuss because i've been gone for one week i will tell you why i have been missing for one week but i will do that a bit later on in the stream but you will get to know why I have been missing for one week and something very important to understand that we're entering so important times in terms of the stock market and in terms of global markets and this is something that we cannot just skip because Bitcoin is so correlated to everything that is happening whether it's negative correlation or positive correlation we will be discussing that but all in all we need to understand that Bitcoin is a puzzle in the greater world of finance and it is very important to note that markets are turning sour markets are turning extremely sour and this is something that I want to focus on to Today. We're going to discuss the recession, the coming recession that is probably coming this year or next year. We're going to discuss why Hong Kong might play a vital role in all of this and also why Coinbase is positioning themselves to win in this market. I really do think that Coinbase is making very good moves and we're going to discuss really how Coinbase is trying to cash in on the entire market when it comes to US equity, when it comes to global equities, when it comes to the global economic standard that we're having right now and how that might decrease in the coming years and how Coinbase is really positioning themselves to win. Also, we're going to discuss Tixel, the privacy coin. You remember I mentioned it a few uh, weeks back. We're going to discuss it a bit more. But all in all, guys, I hope you're doing fine. I hope you're doing fine. It's been a good week that we haven't been streaming. I will tell you why at the end of the episode. And I want to welcome everyone here. I want to welcome Ruslan. I want to welcome Chris, Dylan, Lucas, Sky, Marco, Polo. It's hard. Everyone, very welcome to the show. You know, as usual, number one, smash that like up right now. Number two, let me know what you're drinking, guys because today we're drinking black coffee no milk and no sugar involved and also as always smash the subscribe button and smash the bell button we will start with the markets we will take a look at the crypto markets and see what is happening when i was missing we saw this uh, you know an uh, insane decline to 9k and uh, this was something very very stressful and when i say 9k i really mean below 10k and we are still below 10k we are we're up 1.5 percent since yesterday but yesterday we were also above 10k so this past week has been extremely painful for the entire market and for the entire crypto community but uh, all in all if you just zoom out and look how far we've come in just a few months we were at 3k just a few months ago you realize that we've seen significant significant growth and uh, looking at the minor at the minor market downswings when it comes to the shorter time frames is not really that relevant uh, we don't really see a lot of action in the top 10 maybe you can say that bitcoin sv has action but three percent is nothing looking at the big winners we do have xmax 15 percent nash exchange 15 percent japan content once again japan content is going wild almost each and every day Looking at the big losers, Quant, Icon, uh, Vestchain, ABBC coin. So really, the market is stable. Nothing has really happened. But also, we are recovering from our from our um, uh, from our decline from uh, 10, 11, and down to 9k. Looking also at uh, different exchanges, you know that we do have our collaboration with Bybit. And if you're trading, if you're using leverage, try Bybit if you haven't yet. This is basically a better version of BitMEX. And we do have collaboration with them because you get $60 for free if you use the link in the description to sign up for Bybit. So definitely check it out. Okay, let's start talking about the actual content and the actual topic of the day. As I mentioned, today is going to be a lot about the Bitcoin frenzy of 2019. And I truly do believe that we're entering a period where Bitcoin is going to have a major role in the economic market and in the financial market. We've already seen that people are talking very seriously about Bitcoin in mainstream media. People are talking very seriously about the fact that Bitcoin is, in fact, a potential safe haven and just compare it a few years ago when everyone in the mainstream media was calling bitcoin a tool for terrorists and a tool for money launderers and for criminals so the narrative has shifted a lot and the narrative is shifting because the traditional markets are not performing that well and we do see a lot of signals 
uh, for a recession. You have seen, for example, the fact that in Denmark, you do have negative interest rates if you want to have a mortgage. So this is really the world's first negative interest rate mortgage that we've ever seen. And it happened in Denmark. And it's only one of the first signals and one of the first sign signs that something is not right in the economy. When up becomes down and the whole economy kind of goes upside down on its head, when, uh, when interest rates don't really matter anymore, they become negative, something is really up. But something we do need to discuss is this. Maybe this is the biggest signal of a recession. And um, when we're talking about yield curves, we're talking about the fact that 10-year yield, uh, yield curve and 2-year yield curve are inverting. So when people are talking about US yield curves inverting, we're talking about treasury yields and the fact that you now need to pay more interest on uh, two year compared to 10 year. And this is always a good sign of a recession. And why is it so? Well, because you realize if I lend you money for a long time, I want to have bigger interest because you're going to do whatever you want with my money for a longer time. And obviously, if uh, the time perspective is bigger, I want to have bigger reward for taking the risk. Because if I just lend you money for a week, I'm certain that, hey, probably next week, you're going to give me my money back. But if it is over a longer time period, who knows what happens to you? Who knows how you will really manage that money under a longer time period. So, you know, just a basic thing when it comes to investing and when it comes to economics that the longer the time period, the longer the yield, the, the higher the yield and the higher the return. And so when, when you have short term yields uh, for two years, when it comes to treasury yields, when they become inversed compared to 10 year, basically you get more interest on two year compared to 10 years, something is wrong. And um, uh, this basically means, historically speaking, the inversion of that benchmark yield curve measure means that now we must expect a recession anywhere from 6 to 18 months from today. Why? Because people are worried about the two-year perspective. Something is going to happen within the two years, the market thinks. And that is why the, um, the interest rate is higher in the short term compared to the long term, which should not happen. Traditionally, should not happen. Hey, thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Great to hear. Great to hear for donation. Also, we do see dark clouds in Europe, which is a, a, which is a bit uh, worrying. You know, if you look at European bank stocks, they are basically at their all-time low. If you look at the index of all the bank stocks in Europe, they're basically at their all-time low. At the same time, you do have Hong Kong uh, playing a big role. And now the Hong Kong pro-independence uh, movements are calling for a bank run. Uh, on Chinese banks. And this really happened today on August the 16th. So we're, we're going to see a lot of action in Hong Kong and their struggle against China. And who knows what kind of uh, financial effects that will have. But maybe the most important factor in all of this is that 10 years ago, when the Great Recession happened, the entire world community solved it together. The entire world community came together and solved the issue as uh, as the entire world. Now, the world is much more divided. You see US doing trade wars with China, with Canada, with Europe, with everyone, basically. And we do see a way more shattered situation compared to just a few years back. And of course, especially compared to 10 years. So therefore, this is why so many people are looking into crypto and into Bitcoin right now. And this is clearly seen by the institutional demand. Because whenever you and I read about Bitcoin and whenever you and I handle Bitcoin, we don't really get to see what's actually happening behind the curtain. And some players in this market, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, for example, Coinbase, they are really trying to use this situation to their advantage. And when, when I'm saying to their advantage, uh, I'm saying to the advantage of their custody solutions. Because whenever you see institutional investors getting into crypto, they need to have a custody solution. They're not going to handle crypto themselves. They're not going to do cold storage uh, themselves. Therefore, it is so important for crypto companies and for players within the crypto industry today to take action and to take market position. And Coinbase is doing that. So Coinbase recently purchased uh, Zappos institutional custody. And this is just today, this news came out. And Coinbase is really trying to be the key player when it comes to institutions. And what's interesting is that you see different exchanges and different companies taking different routes for success. So you look at Binance, for example. What kind of route has Binance taken during the past um, years? 
Well, from the beginning, they were a an altcoin exchange. <laughs> you can basically find anything on Binance. That was very successful. Then they switched into IEOs. Instead of doing an ICO on your own, now you can do an IEO on Binance, and uh, they will help you market. They will help you. Uh, they will help you with setting everything up, and probably they will also bring more investors to you. Okay, that is also kind of uh, uh, dying down. It's still very interesting, and still many people are investing in IEOs and hoping that the price will go up. And a lot of times it still does happen. So it's not like IEOs are dead. It still does happen a lot. But at the same time, looking at the longer perspective, we do see custody as being one of the biggest cash cows. Cash cows when it comes to crypto as a whole. Why is it so? Well, number one, the demand from institutional investors. That, that is quite clear. That is a no-brainer. But number two, you also need to be looking at what kind of interest rates you're getting in crypto. Because there is a big arbitrage right now between interest rates in the fiat world and interest rates within crypto. You look, for example, at MakerDAO and DAI, stablecoin, and look at their interest rates. I mean, sometimes they are over 10%. So if you lock in your Ether, you will probably get over 10% back if you really trust the system and you really trust the algorithm, which, you know, it has worked up until now, but who knows how it will really progress in the future. So whoever has a lot of crypto and wh whoever does custody, for example, and if they are indeed allowed to use lending protocols and lending protocols today are, are probably a, a, a lot more risk risk free compared to normal lending because in lending protocols today you normally have to have uh, more than 100% co collateral so you cannot really default on your loan it's still not risk free because the whole system can collapse i mean who knows how the maker dal algorithm will handle major crashes in ether although it has been handling everything very well even though we fell from 1k to like 100 or 200 dollars for one ether in the past year but it, there is still a technological risk we still don't know exactly how smart contracts are going to handle it but what i want to say is the following that you know look at custody this is going to be a huge business and a huge opportunity for so many players and uh, coinbase is really the first one um, and i think they even came out and said that they are handling uh, 1 to 400 million dollars per week they have an inflow of one to four hundred million dollars per week now they're uh, acquiring zappo and you know what probably they will be staking the coins probably they will be using lending protocols uh, if they are allowed to do that who knows really what the regulation is around that but if they are allowed they will absolutely do that and that, I think, will really propel them to success. So it is just interesting to see how different players are utilizing the opportunities. Some are doing altcoins, some are doing IAOs, some are doing margin trading. You look at Bybit and Bitmax, for example, incredible companies, incredible, incredible companies uh, that have really utilized their position. But at the same time, custody is something that is only starting and still and still uh, not, not reached its fullest potential. But with everything that is happening right now, it's just a question of time. In my view, it is just a question of time because custody solutions will be able to leverage DeFi, decentralized finance, meaning lending protocols and really make a lot of money when it comes to the arbitrage between fiat interest rates and crypto interest rates. Because once again, in fiat, you do have negative interest rates. <laughs> Nobody is getting anything for their money. The yield curve is inverted. I mean, it, 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 this is completely insane. And in many cases, you do have negative yield as well. That treasury uh, treasury yield is negative and really the only people that are buying that negative paper is because uh, are, are people who are forced to like pension funds and other institutions who are forced to buy something they cannot hold cash because cash is deemed too risky so they, they have to buy negative yield um, uh, uh, paper so in that sense you do realize that it's only uh, the beginning but we do see dark clouds on coinbase uh, cloud as well and one of them is the fact that barclays have uh, cut ties with coinbase so if you're ch using coinbase and you are handling British pounds, beware, beware of this. And this is, by the way, an issue with all crypto companies. And to be honest with you, even we at Ivan on Take, we recently got a call from our bank and they were asking a lot of questions about crypto. And yeah, we had to explain a lot. So who knows how that will end? <laughs> but this is a never ending story. You look at, for example, how the Kraken exchange was founded. They had so much trouble with exchanges and they had so much trouble with uh, handling payments. And it is an ongoing trouble. So at the end of the day, of course, the hope is that we will see banks that really take the step and convert because 
because either you convert or you will be irrelevant because crypto is here, every, uh, uh, DeFi is here, it's not going away. But uh, up, until, uh, up until that point, you will see a lot of struggles. So that was really my uh, my uh, rant when it comes to recession, when it comes to global economy, and also when it comes to the fact that Bitcoin is becoming central. And as, in, as I mentioned, take a look at Hong Kong. Keep an eye on Hong Kong. I will try to get box mining on... Um, on the show to talk more about exactly what's going on because I think that is going to be extremely interesting, especially especially if they manage to uh, to 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 cause a lot of trouble when it comes to the banking space with their bank run. But in many cases, people want to do a bank run, but then <laughs> nothing happens. They don't do it. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, what is happening in the chat? What is happening in the chat, Dean? Uh, when I can unfreeze? Uh, okay. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, Zoomers will run the world. Where the hell are we living at? Yes, Merdad. Indeed, indeed, indeed. It is a mad world. It is a mad world we're living in. Okay, guys, I want to give you now an update on the Tixel privacy coin because you know that uh, my team and I were working a lot with privacy technology and with privacy solutions. And so one of the projects we've been working on is Resistance, for example. We're not involved anymore, but we did uh, we did work a lot with them on the technology, trying to implement atomic swaps, trying to implement uh, all of the necessary technological solutions in order to have a privacy coin with Resistance. And now we're working with another coin that... Uh, and by the way, you should know that I am personally invested in this, so I do have a personal interest in this, just to be 100% transparent. But we do have now a collaboration with Tixel. And Tixel here, I'm mainly an investor and I'm also supporting the project because they are doing privacy, number one, which I find very important. And you know, we worked with resistance in the past. Number two, what is interesting is the fact that they are going to be listed on Binance DEX. So it's very exciting for me personally to share that with you, that Tixel is indeed gonna be on Binance DEX and it is confirmed and you can really read the entire announcement here. And all in all, as a summary, uh, I told you also in the previous video a few weeks back that Tixel is a privacy coin, but it is, you can think of it like Nano, but, uh, uh, but private. You know, Nano was extremely, extremely popular coin in 2017. It kind of died out, but the technology behind Nano was very interesting in terms of their data structure. And their data structure was uh, block lattice. So uh, block lattice is also, is also used for for Tixel, but now you also do have um, uh, uh, privacy solutions on top of it. And, you know, at the end of the day, we need to realize the fact that privacy coins are still in their early days and most people don't really get the point of privacy coins. And this is something that I think will change quickly as the world prog progresses towards crypto. I think it will change extremely quickly. And um, most people still don't see any point. But the more they learn about how economy works and how uh, Bitcoin works, how crypto works and the importance of privacy, because it is simply it is simply inevitable. If you enter crypto, you learn all of these different factors and all of these different fundamentals of, um, of our community. So it is just a question of time. Then it's also important to know that once they list on Binance, B Binance Dex, uh, it is it's gonna be closed. So up until now, until they list on Binance Dex, it is possible to get in. Uh, and uh, basically, they told that the price is like fifty dollars for one million coins. But once again, I'm personally in this, so uh, I do have a vest vested interest in this. So be sure. And um, they do have twenty five percent bonus right now, but that may be changing as well because uh, they are selling this out. It's also important to note another thing, and that is that they do not have KYC up up to one um, up to ten thousand uh, dollars. And this is also important to note because. When I talked about Tixel last time and I discussed privacy and why it's important and why it's so significant and why I'm involved and why I was involved with resistance as well uh, on a te technical level, uh, many people complained about KYC, the fact that you needed KYC to, to be involved. But now they have removed KYC uh, and it is a threshold of 10k USD. So something to keep in mind and something to, uh, to appreciate because at the end of the day, we need to be pushing towards more solutions that, you, look, KYC is impossible to circumvent completely, but it is still possible to have a trade-off, for example, like Tixel has done with uh, 10K without KYC. But of course, if you are a big player, they, they are required to have KYC. So up, uh, up uh, to 10K, no KYC, and then KYC. But all in all, it's going to be extremely interesting. And if you have other 
privacy projects that you want me to take a look at, send them to me. Because you know that my team and I were working a lot with privacy projects. And Resistance is one of them, Tixel is another of them. And uh, also, if you have questions about Tixel, post them below. Because once again, I would be happy to discuss Tixel more. So post them in the comment section and we're going to maybe discuss them in a future video. And before we get into into the chat and before we start discussing uh, your questions and answers in the chat uh, i just want to uh, mention this quadriga story is still continuing uh, quadriga story is still going on and what is interesting is that victims now are losing patience. And it is so sad to see because Quadriga was like the biggest exchange in Canada. I understand it was the biggest exchange in Canada. I'm not from Canada myself, so I cannot tell you for sure if it was the biggest exchange. But it was definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest. And you know, what's interesting is that EY actually lost $1 million in Bitcoin. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. And unfortunately, we do see this situation right now where companies such as EY, KPMG, Lloyd, they're all guessing into crypto and it is wonderful and they really have to because if they don't get into crypto they will be irrelevant uh, absolutely irrelevant and this is something that we're seeing right now ey and everyone else guessing in they're doing different projects they're doing different uh, missions for the government and really government appointed ey but in february they actually sent 103 bitcoin to an address that is controlled by quadriga and you know that Quadriga CEO allegedly died. Uh, who knows if he really died? I don't want to speculate. So nobody has access to those Bitcoins anymore. And EY actually sent it. So they lost 103 Bitcoin. And now we're seeing more and more demands that e EY should take responsibility and either refund or find those Bitcoin. And when I say find, I mean, I mean of course, get access to those Bitcoin. And you realize that... Unfortunately, we will see more and more of it because uh, everyone is new. Everyone is new to this. When it comes to forensics, when it comes to EY trying to find money, incidentally, they send it somewhere. And you realize in the big corporations such as EY, Deloitte, KPMG, and all of the big force, you do have so many different people and you have uh, so many different people on different levels. And all in all, it is so easy to make a mistake. Uh, and I know that for a fact because um, I, I have been a customer at Deloitte for approximately one year and they have been amazing, absolutely amazing. But at the same time, you also realize how many people they were and how many people actually switched during my one year at Deloitte because I was a customer when it comes to auditing. So they audited our business uh, at Deloitte. And you know, each and every month, not, not each and every month, but like every three months, you get a new guy because that guy uh, quit, that guy switched um, uh, switched positions that guy went uh, went to work somewhere else and you realize it's a mess at the end of the day so i do realize why big corporations such as ey deloitte and other big four corporations they are wonderful at so many different things but when it comes to crypto right now they're still new and when it comes to their people they have so many different people they switch people all the time i'm i'm honestly i'm not surprised that they lost 103 bitcoin i'm not surprised at all and this is something that uh, will happen more and more until more and more people are actually comfortable working with crypto cases and crypto solutions. Uh, but up until now, I really do hope they refund this amount, 103 Bitcoin, and really take the responsibility. So definitely something to keep in mind. Merdad, uh, Canada, money, laundry, uh, nah, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know about that. And final, final topic, guys, before we get into the Q&A, why I was gone. So this is very important. And, you know, I was gone since uh, last Friday and this week has not been very, very fun for me. So you realize that approximately a few months ago, like in, in May, we did get a strike on this YouTube channel because YouTube did not like a video. They said, hey, it's like, you know, sales of firearms, but we, I never had firearms. So they and they were not, not really clear exactly what it was, but I do have my ideas why it was. But now they did have some kind of bug. So that exact same video that already got a strike in May got another strike. This should never happen. It uh, it, it is clearly a bug. I told it to them. They said, yes it is a bug but when it comes to bureaucracy when it comes to fixing the bug they couldn't do anything so that is why unfortunately it was gone for one week uh, it seems to be resolved now so that bug seems to be resolved now and that is why i'm happy to be back but once again it clearly shows how you know how brittle this community is and everything that is built on top of youtube is in many ways brittle who knows exactly when when they're gonna do another action or another thing that's gonna happen or whatever's gonna uh, whatever's gonna occur so 
when it comes to YouTube, I'm just, you know, I come to this conclusion that the mindset needs to change. The mindset absolutely needs to change. And um, uh, when, what I mean by that, I mean that I, I need to be thinking more long term because this YouTube thing is fantastic now and I'm going to do it until it works. But at the same time, I'm relying on one player. I'm relying on YouTube and I'm relying on, uh, on Google to keep me here. And the same is for all other YouTubers. So definitely something to keep in mind. And, you know, it is a bit nostalgic because one of my most favorite things to do is to do these streams. So, uh, you know, as long as it works, I'm happy. But uh, at the end of the day, we're dealing with topics that are sensitive. Bitcoin is not something that is welcomed everywhere. So who knows, guys? Who knows? It, it is actually a bit sad. But um, and this week has not been very fun for me because you, you kind of realize in one way or another, you're forced to find other solutions. You're, voice, you're forced to find other ways to do business. But um, at the end of the day, this is life. C'est la vie, guys. C'est la vie. Go d -Live. Look, so many people are saying, you know, you should do decentralized streaming, decentralized platforms. But you realize if I do that, my potential will not be really utilized because how many people will watch on d -Live? Like five people, 10 people. And you realize then I better do something else because when it comes to YouTube, I mean, you have to give it to them. It's amazing distribution. And that, it doesn't matter how great content you have. Without amazing distribution, you will not succeed. And um, when it comes to succeeding, I mean, reaching as many people as possible, doing things that affect, make a difference in the world. And for now, uh, YouTube is the only platform, unfortunately. YouTube is the only platform. And maybe in the future, we will have other platforms. But for now, YouTube is the only platform. And so if I am, for example, to switch to DLive, you realize I better be doing something else. I better go start, start a business. I better be working on Academy or something else. But uh, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be just D Life or something. And when it comes to when it comes to distribution, that is the most important thing. Without distribution, doesn't matter how great product you have, doesn't matter how great the brain you have, or you know how much value you can give. Without distribution, it's nothing. So unfortunately, we're living in a world where distribution when it comes to content is highly centralized. And, uh, you know, I hope that, you know, EOS Voice or other solutions might help us with that in the future. But when it comes to me personally, I do understand why, why people are saying, hey, try this platform, try that platform. Yeah, we, this is better than YouTube because it's decentralized. But for me, that is unfortunately not interesting at the moment because I better go start a crypto business. I better go, st go start some global thing. And when it comes to content, I think it is fantastic, but it is fantastic because I have good distribution and, and YouTube is, is, um, is the key here. So just some context to that, just some context to that. Uh, they are new, so light. So, uh, what do you mean? Who are new? Uh, man, it, it doesn't matter really. Uh, I, I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> I saw it yesterday. I saw it yesterday. J. Ron Janis. I saw it yesterday. Exactly. And uh, if it is that distribution is not present, you realize that uh, there are so many different things that uh, that I can do that will have so much bigger effect and so much bigger reward for me and for everyone else involved. Starting a global business, starting a global corporation, starting whatever. There are so many fun things I would like to do in the future as well. Who knows? And, and when it comes to content, that is the thing, guys. When it comes to content, I love it. Like that, that is the best thing I know. And one good way of distributing content is podcasts. So that could be something. But if it is the case that something happens with YouTube, it's going to be extremely difficult. So we're, we're going to see, guys. We're going to see, guys. Are you signed up to Vid? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've, check, I've checked it out. But uh, yeah, it's so new. So you can't really do a lot of things now. But we'll see, we'll see. Ivan, speaking of Lightning platforms, have you looked into Nexo? I haven't, I haven't. So when I'm talking about the fact that I'm excited about lending, and when, when I'm talking about the fact that I'm ex excited about lending platforms, uh, I'm not talking about like centralized platforms. I mean, those are wonderful, but at the same time, it's not that interesting. We've, we've seen centralized solutions for so many years. What is interesting is decentralized solutions. So for example, atomic loans, that is extremely interesting. For example, MakerDAO, extremely interesting, where you do have lending protocols, where lending is just another protocol on top of the internet infrastructure. Just like HTTP is a way of communicating, uh, or TCP as well, uh, so are lending protocols right now. You can have interest as a protocol. You have money, you put it into, uh, into a smart contract, you get interest. And with minimal risk, because normally our lending protocols right now do have more than 100% collateral. So you realize that when it comes to lending, the most important thing right now is 
people need to understand the fact that this is the future. But at the same time, the more people understand the 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 smaller the arbitrage will be because the arbitrage is just mind blowing right now when it comes to interest rates. You get uh, 10 plus percent on maker and you get minus uh, <laughs> negative interest rates in the fiat world. So you realize that when it comes to arbitrage, many people are still not using it when it comes to interest rates between uh, fiat and crypto. Uh, maker, and it's not, it's not, man. Yeah, you, you should study it. You should study it for sure. Uh, thoughts on Bit Panda? Haven't used it. Haven't used it, man. Uh, mixer view which viewer charge ch chart. Uh, okay, uh, Ivan, can you update your storage video? Yeah, yeah. So I think you're talking about the video I sent to you previously. W the video I did with El uh, with Elsa. Uh, you realize that uh, when it comes to storing, it is the same. It is the same as it was a year ago. So I could do I could do a, a similar thing, but is the information is basically the same. Respect your audience next time. Yeah, so I, I did inform you guys on Telegram and on Twitter. But the thing is, uh, because this is this was a bug and because they say they will solve it, I always hope that it is going to be solved soon, not like a week from now. So that is why I said I'm going to be back in, in like a few days. But uh, yeah, they're not very fast. They're not very fast. Salavi, yes, yes, yes. Spreading the words about crypto is way more dangerous. <laughs> true. <laughs> that, that is true. For many uh, institutions, it is true. Uh, is Maker better than Celsius? So Celsius is a centralized solution. I think it's interesting. We had, I, I think you definitely should check out our video with uh, Alex Mashinsky. It, it's one of the best interests on this channel because not only is he, uh, is he a crypto entrepreneur with Celsius? He was actually extremely involved in the development of the internet and really when it comes to voice over IP technology that we're using each and every day. And you can say that even YouTube streaming in, in many ways utilizes the voice over IP technology in, in one way or another. But he was one of the people who really started to commercialize that technology during the dot-com bubble, during the 2000s and even after that. So I, th I do think that he's a very interesting guy. But when it comes to Celsius, I haven't used it. But it is a centralized solution it is not like a lending protocol when it, and what excites me well both as a tech person but also as um, a person who's interested in uh, in changing the way lending works the, in that sense celsius is not one of these projects uh, instead you need to be looking at platforms that are protocols not just platforms that are a company and they handle everything for you platforms that are a protocol and the one that I'm following right now, I can uh, show it to you, is Atomic Loans. I actually met the guys in, um, yeah, so so this one. I actually met the guys in Canada. And uh, this is going to be a Bitcoin and crypto backed loans uh, without middleman and cross-chain. So this is going to be extremely interesting. Uh, I'm not exactly sure exactly how it's going to be working uh, because it's still in development. But this is not a company that is just going to give you an application and they're going to take your money and promise you that they will pay you interest. This is gonna, going to be a protocol. So we're going to see. We're going to see. <clears throat> Have you heard? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've heard about Apollo. Nice, nice, nice. We need to make you YouTube go. <laughs> right, right, right. We'll see. We'll see. MakerDAO is not fully algorithm. Uh, yes, exactly. So they, they still um, they still have humans doing the parameters and all of that. Uh, but at the same time, this is the the furthest we've come. Maybe Atomic Loans will be a better solution. But uh, yes, you're, you're right that MakerDAO still has uh, humans doing the different um, uh, parameters when it comes to when it comes to different numbers that make the algorithm work. And that is why I told you in this video as well that it is not completely risk free because at the end of the day, it still requires this intervention but hopefully it will not be like that with uh, atomic loans and other um, projects and also it is because MakerDAO is not only a lending platform it's also a stable coin so uh, I think there is a difference there because they need to keep their stable coin stable basically and that stable coin is all uh, when it comes to, is all dependent depending on the supply and demand and basically when you have the price going below a dollar the whole idea is that demand should increase and when the demand increases, then it goes back to one dollar. And when it's above a dollar, it should uh, it should decrease. So the demand should decrease, and the supply should increase. So so all in all, uh, it is still an algorithm that is that is depending on uh, parameters. But uh, I think large part of that is because they do have a stable coin. Uh, Ivan, you're in the dark, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Ivan, I'm a con uh, content creator due to censorship and shadow banning. I could use uh, uh, Rise Crypto. Yeah, ma look, when it comes to shadow banning, I haven't experienced that. I, I don't think there is a lot of shadow banning happening when it comes to crypto and when it comes to YouTube. Uh, but yeah, I'm not really sure. I know you know. I I'm not sure who, who you are, bro. But I will check out Rise Crypto. Anyway, guys. Anyway, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. It was an amazing time. Hopefully we can continue doing this. Uh, I will have a stream tomorrow. It's, it, uh, it's not going to be at 8 a.m. because it's Saturday. So I think it's going to be maybe at 11 a.m. And then on Monday, hopefully we can go back to our normal schedule 8 a.m. each and every day. So guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your interest, your questions. And really, when, you, when I see so many people watching, you realize that, you know, it's, it's very special. And it really makes me think that, you know, I, I am very thankful. I am very thankful for everything we're doing. And especially when you see these issues with YouTube, you kind of get a lot more perspective on, on everything that is happening. And you kind of understand how special this thing is that we're doing together and how brittle it is as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to smash that like, smash the bell button and have a great, great day, guys. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.